God who told him to form a company. <laughs> the company's name was coined from God the Father, Son, and Spirit. See, I know what you're thinking. I should have known that the man was a false prophet. <laughs> but you're wrong. Knowing what I know now, he would not have fooled me, but I was a child in spiritual matters at the time. Furthermore, have you considered hypnotism? Have you also considered that he was Satan's plant and therefore had powers from the prince of darkness? If you are so sure that you wouldn't have been so easily duped, how come many of you even hearing me to that say being duped by your pastors, false pastors and Jews? How come millions are being duped by false pastors and Jews? How come? Hypnotism? Satan's plant? We don't know. Make the judgment yourself in your environment. After a period, he told me that God wanted me to join God's company. Furthermore, God also said that I was to arrange and import certain goods from overseas, which some construction companies in the den in Nigeria. To make the story short, I complied. Who can refuse God? The same way you are, many people today can refuse God in your churches and denominations. Isn't it how many believers reason when they hear prophecies by their pastors and Jews of new projects, outreaches, crusades God has asked them to start or to embark on? Then they turn around and ask for money to finance them. Isn't it the same thing? I order the goods, of course. But why the goods were on the high seas? And the first prophet informed me that his bank manager had disappointed him. He had assured me that his bank was going to finance the local portion. That's the custom dues and local transportation. In this same period, this first prophet brought another business proposition. He claimed that God wanted us again to go into. I couldn't comprehend how God would ask me to go into that particular business. I'm sure if I had done that, I wouldn't be standing here before you today. I asked, if God wanted money that bad, couldn't he send it from heaven like manna? Or send us gold coins like the one that Peter fished from the sea? I was a baby, but I wasn't stupid. I was disturbed. That night I battled in the spirit. I saw myself speaking in tongues for the first time in the dream. Something I'd never done while I was conscious. Remember, I've never yet received the spirit baptism, and I had doubts even about it. When I woke up, I told my wife the business proposition by this false prophet. My wife said never, and asked me to talk to the pastor of the church organization we belong to. I met the pastor. He told me the same thing my wife said. Then he gave me scriptures to use when talking to the false prophet. So I engaged the false prophet on a one-on-one -on -one basis in our master bedroom with those questions. For the first time, he was speechless. Our tongue-speaking, God-hearing brother was speechless. God had exposed him and the devil. It was then that I remember the visit of Satan in that same master bedroom. Yes. Many people talk stupid things about the spiritual realm. But I want to tell you my dream. God had opened my eyes to see a very large python on the floor. I can still remember that incident as I'm talking now. And he will confirm his words in your hearts today. Not because of that, but because of the victory. The Spirit prompted me to say the blood of Jesus. As I was starting to speak, it disappeared. The coward. God has sent a warning. But I hadn't associated the devil with the false prophet until that moment. Many other things happened subsequently. But suffice it to say that God protected me from the wicked plots of the false prophet. Even assassination. The police arrested him and his wife. But I had them released after a couple of days. God is still God. Praise the Lord. As I was battling that false prophet, Unknown to me, I was consulting with another, a false teacher. He was also a colleague. So don't think these false prophets or false teachers are to be found only on the streets. No. They can be occupying high positions in governments or corporations. He was a colleague. 
And he attended fellowship of believers in a workplace. He had given me some books to read. Because when they see a zeal, the enemy pounces. But he belonged to the Seventh-day Adventists. So that created more questions and few answers after reading the books. The church I was attending at that time wasn't very helpful. I'm sure they wanted to, but they couldn't answer the questions I was asking using the Bible and the things I read from the Adventist books. And I suspect many today who are pastors and Jews will not even answer those questions. Dissatisfied, I stopped attending church services altogether. My family and I started worshipping at home. I have seen the power of God in my life. I had testimonies. I've had his voice before then. I've seen him heal and deliver. So I told God, I said, look, I am no longer going to any building called church or denomination until you direct me to one. That should be your attitude if you are confused. In my dreams, I would say things that show that Adventist position on the Sabbath was correct. You guess it, the Sabbath, Sabbath worshipping Christians. Other times I would see things showing that Adventists were wrong. You see, you can't count on Adventists because also so-called Bible-believing Christians have made Sunday so as their God. Meanwhile, I was reading my Bible voraciously. And many things didn't seem to add up, but I continue to read and believe God. Scripture, please. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and will be in you. Praise the Lord. Note that scripture. Looking back, I couldn't have comprehended many things because the Bible is not a book. My intellect couldn't have apprehended many things of God, even though I was born again, as that scripture says. I needed to grow, and I needed the Holy Spirit to indwell me. Those who are born again have the Holy Spirit dwelling with them according to that scripture, but he's not yet indwelling them. Know the difference. With my head knowledge, I could have gone either way. Had I relied on my knowledge and intellect, I would have made a shipwreck of my faith. So if you are hearing me, don't make a shipwreck of your faith. Because you have not yet known so many answers to many things bubbling in your heart. I was all alone. Of course, my wife was there, but we're all alone. But my trust in God to resolve everything by and by never wavered. I, never, I trusted God, but I was not going to be shaken from where I was. I'm not going anywhere. Scripture, please. I'm going to read. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes from my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor by noon, or by moon, or by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. That should be your attitude. I held on to him. But I wasn't going to go anywhere to be deceived anymore. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't rely on myself for church or denomination. I looked up to God as I said. I looked up to the hills. It would take nearly a year before he guided me in a dream to attend a crusade taking place in Lagos, Nigeria in 1989. At the end of that crusade, the preacher who had come from the USA asked all those who have not been going to church to go to any other organization that had helped organize that crusade. My plan was to go to all of them, beginning with the one that announced was where they were going to be meeting. That's the meeting of those who had organized the crusade, the, the church they said they were going to be meeting that Saturday. Next topic. Reading the Bible after spirit baptism. When God directs you to place, something will always happen. That was the first time I learned any building or denomination called church after nearly one year hiatus. And that was the second best moment of my life. 
you guessed it. The first one was the night in January 1986 when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. The speaker on that November day of 1989 used where God asked Moses and Exodus to be in a particular place if he wants to see him. At the end of that sermon, he asked those desiring spirit baptism to step out. Many stepped out. We are taken to a conference room in another building to be prayed for. Before he said a few words, my world changed. I cannot describe what just happened. I can't, and I'm not going to attempt it. All I know was that I burst out speaking in tongues. The world seemed totally different. Thank you, Jesus. My wife would later tell me that she could not believe what was happening because we went together. Because we had always discussed on whether tongues were for this age. Remember our experiences with the tongue speaking false prophet? It had made us almost to distrust this great gift of God, which I'm sure was the purpose of the devil. A few weeks later, my wife was also baptized in the Spirit. Because we had stopped doubting and we're not believing. So if you have not received spirit baptism because you are doubting and you are not believing, I mean you are doubting and not believing, please stop doubting and believe. God will not give us what we have doubts of or what we disdain. He will not, he will not force his gift on us. We must desire it. Reading the Bible after my spirit baptism became a great experience, a very joyful one. I began to understand more and more. Thank you, Jesus. The more I read, the more I found answers to some of the questions that others couldn't answer. I remained in that church organization for years, of course. That church organization, I cannot tell you at the time, I don't know now, had what I consider one of the best Sunday school programs in Nigeria. I want you to know, and I've said it many times in the past, the Bible is a spirit-inspired document. So it requires spirit-inspired interpretation. It's not something you read with your head. It's not intellect. It is heart being born again, spirit-filled, and then the intellect kicks in. What I lacked before, I now had. I could read with understanding. And I was enjoying reading the Bible. And being ministered to directly by the Holy Spirit. Not any human being. What I like before, I now had. Thank you, Jesus. Many things have happened since then. One of them being the birth of this ministry, Worldwide Evangelical Ministry, which is what he gave me in 1992. Freely you have received, freely give. You are hearing this today, so don't charge anyone for that which you have not labored for. You didn't labor for this message, I didn't labor for this message. I'm narrating my life experience, my journey to encourage you. Always remember, if you begin to charge because you know how to speak or to gather and say, tell, bring tithes and offerings here, you are going to lose that anointing if you get spirit, if you are spirit filled. Many who receive spirit baptism lost anointing when they started chasing mammon. That is the problem. Mammon, mammon chasing is what has destroyed the anointing of many brothers and sisters. Yet, the Lord warned us, you cannot serve God and mammon. Let's read your place. I read from Matthew chapter 6, verses 24 and 25. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Sorry about that. Many a fate have been derailed as followers of Christ. Spirit filled, worry about their lives, their needs, what they will eat, what they will drink, what they will dress, and if they are pastors, the cathedrals they want to rate. The Lord saw ahead. The warning in that scripture we just read is for believers, it's not for unbelievers. 
is warning for especially spirit filled believers. You cannot serve God and mammon. Don't allow mammon into your life. The moment you do it, the anointing will go. Mammon and the Holy Spirit cannot occupy the same space. So if you're in a church today where they continue to talk about tithes and offerings, you go from there because it is not. There is no anointing there. I want to sound this warning again. You cannot serve God and mammon. Remember our first prophet. He brought mammon in. That was enticement, but to serve, but to do God's work. And what happened? I nearly lost my faith. You don't want to lose yours. Please, believe that spirit baptism is real. That's why this whole narrative today. Because when you receive the spirit baptism, you will not, your life will never be the same again. You will understand the scriptures. It may take years to get everything, but you'll be patient. Because the Spirit teaches you patience. There are many things I used to ask them that I found answers 20 years, 30 years later. But the truth is, you know that He is watching over you. That's the whole purpose of this testimony today. And that's why I will live for Him and for no other. And that's the song today. I will live for Him and no other.